Hi, welcome back to another Surger Tip Clip. Today, I'm going to answer the burning question of how do you close the shoulder seam after you've used the double fold bias binder and make it look nice? But before we get to that, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free and click the little bell so that you'll get a notification when I post a new one. So I have some samples and um, I'm going to walk you through each step that I do to get a good result on the shoulder seam. So let's take a look at everything. I have this little sample. It's just like a little mini sample. I didn't make the whole shirt, but this is a double brush polyester. And I was kind of hoping that I could get um, either cream with cream or the um, maroon colors to go together at the joint so that you could really see clearly. However, after doing it about four times, I kept coming up with the same result. But this is a perfect joint. You can see that the shoulder seam lies flat and smooth. The edges of the double fold binding match each other. And even the lines of stitching are a perfect match. How did I do that? It's easier than you think, and it's using one of my very favorite notions. So let's go to the table and talk about that. This is the first sample that I wanted to show you, and this is a cotton lycra knit. So it's kind of, it's not bulky or anything, but it's got a little more heft, say, than a uh, an ITY knit. Um, and I got a really nice join on this neckline, and I'm going to flip it over to show you how I did. Now, this was using the 15 millimeter double fold bias binder, which I really like because it gives you a, kind of a bold width for the binding and with the stripes, I think it's kind of fun when you can change up the direction of the stripes. It, it, it's just a nice little detail. So let's flip it over and take a look. And P.S. This is a serger tip clip, but guess what? I'm not going to be using the serger today. This is all done differently. So here we have um, the binding on the inside and you can see the chain looper thread and it's stitched down. Everything is caught nicely. But what I did on this is I stitched the shoulder seams open. Now on this one, I did this a little differently than the next sample I'm going to show you. I left the um, seam allowances on the shoulder seam raw. It's a knit. They're not going to go anywhere, but typical of these knits, uh, this particular type of knit, you can see how it curls just a little bit. So that can be pressed down flat. But uh, I'll walk you through the other steps on my other sample fabric. But just to show you that, it looks nice and flat and smooth and it's clean on the inside. So here is the exact same fabric that you just saw on the little dress form. And I have not completed this. Typically, you leave the left shoulder seam open when you're doing this technique. But if you made a mistake and decided to leave the right shoulder seam open, I don't think anyone's going to go crazy over that. I certainly wouldn't. But here we have it. Now, I left these long tails just as a reminder for me to tell you. I like to cut my binding uh, strip much longer than I really need for the neckline length. And there is a good reason for that in regard to the shoulder seam. When you start stitching on the binding strip itself, sometimes it can end up being slightly wider until it gets going. I always say it's like riding a bicycle and you kind of wiggle around for the first couple of split seconds and then it, everything kind of smooths out. You can see how the beginning edge of this is just a tiny bit wider than this. So I like to allow enough length so that when I actually do put the neckline into the binding on the machine, it's a uniform width as it goes along. And that goes for the ending edge as well. So that's my first tip. I have gotten my binding on and I will refer you back 
to the double fold bias binder, talking about how to do that and, and set the machine up and everything that goes along with that. Let's talk about all of the prep work and I'll put in some little still shots too, to um, show you everything clearly. Now on this one, I did use a three thread narrow to finish the edges of the fabric. Is it necessary? No, it isn't because again, it's a knit. The edges are not going to ravel. But if you think that it's going to keep you awake at night to have raw edges on those shoulder seams, by all means, go right ahead and do that. So I, um, do a three thread narrow on that before I join the uh, right shoulder seam. And then I stitch that at the designated seam allowance. And also I have my woven stay tape on both back edges. I always use that when I'm using knits and even woven fabrics on the shoulder seams, simply because typically the angle of the shoulder when it's cut out in the fabric is not on the exact straight of grain. So this keeps it from growing when you're um, wearing it. And so I've got my woven stay tape on, then I stitch my shoulder seam and my left one is open. So I've put on my double fold bias binding and now I'm going to just clip those down and I clip them even with the edge of the shoulder seam, just like that. And we can check those. We don't need those anymore. And this, now that you can see this a little more clearly, you can see that woven stay tape. On the inside of this, I did my previous tip clip using the SSI knit stay tape to get a nice smooth uh, result with the binding. And that's what's on the inside of this. So double brush polyester is notorious for being a little bit persnickety going through the binder. And that tape, the knit stay tape, does do the trick on that. And it's one inch wide. This is a 10, millim 10 millimeter um, binding. And it's a little bit narrower than the one you saw on the stripe. I'm going to back up for just a second and tell you that after I stitched the shoulder seam on my sewing machine, I give it a nice clap after I press it just to flatten it out as much as possible and keep it nice and smooth so that again, it's going to redu reduce the bulk before I put on the binding. Now we're ready to go to the next step. I've put on the binding using the double fold bias binder. And again, I'm going to give that a good press with steam and a press cloth. Again, I went around and I clapped this down just to compress it as much as possible. But now I'm ready to go to my sewing machine, not my serger and um, attach the, or close the left shoulder seam. But here is my trick. I think you're going to really like this. And as I said before, it's using one of my favorite notions of all time. I think, I think that wonder tape is really a notion that lives up to its uh, name. What I like to do on this to ensure that I'm going to get a perfect join is I'm going to cut off about an inch of this and lay it right in here. And that way, when I press these together, I'm going to make sure that not only are the edges of the binding lined up with each other, but also that the stitching lines are. So I'm going to trim this off and this is washable. I bring it in just a little bit from the edge of the binding and I give it a nice firm finger press. And then I carefully take off the little paper and it's a sticky little tape. So let me just show you what I do with that. Right sides together. So I've got my wash away wonder tape. You can see it right here. And now I'm going to match up these edges and make sure that everything looks good. And what I like to do is peel it back just a little bit 
to the point of where the seam allowance is and I take a look at it. My stitching lines are lined up with each other. The edges of the binding are lined up with each other. So I'm going to give that a firm pinch and just pinch it right along where the tape is. And then, now you could do this with the serger, and then I'll tell you one last final step on this. I've gone to my sewing machine. I just set up for a straight stitch with a stitch length of 3.0 and stitched across and took a look and it's still sticking up because that wonder tape is caught between these two. And I always like to double check it from the outside. You can see a perfect join. The lines are all lined up. The edges are lined up. It's nice and neat and tidy. So what I do is I pull the seam apart from the, um, wonder tape and I just if you can pick it off it's good and just toss it it's done its job we don't need it anymore then I give that seam press it open I'm gonna put that down I just have put a little mini press cloth over this get my seam allowances open give it and this is with steam and I use a lift and press motion. I think I've talked about that with knits before that you don't want to slide the iron back and forth on it because um, sometimes it can distort it. And then it's still a little bit sticky, but then I take my clapper and I really press down on it for a few seconds to help compress it. So now it's nice and flat and smooth. And let's take a look at it from the right side. Looks excellent. Just like that. Now, the last step, and I won't bother doing this on camera. Um, let me just show it to you on the blue and white stripe. The last thing I do, and it's not absolutely necessary, but um, again, it will hold these edges down flat. I take a needle and thread and just take a couple of hand stitches and catch the edges of the binding just to the binding itself, just going through that um, layer on the inside. And that will hold that open, flat and smooth. But even without doing that, you can see that it really gives you a better finished product when you stitch the seam open on your sewing machine rather than your serger. And I know that's probably kind of sounds like heresy for me where I do serger tip clips. But um, I think that the final result is really beautiful and there's no um, big bump or lump there. And it's pretty easy to get that join smooth with the little bit of wonder tape. So I highly recommend this technique. And if anyone has any ideas of a different way to do it, I'm more than happy to listen to that. Thanks for joining me today. And please send in your questions and suggestions for future tip clips. I'll look forward to seeing them and you soon.